and welcome to another video with Kilted Whispers ASMR. Um, in this video, I'm going to be doing a soft-spoken ramble about gay dating and the a little sort of touch on the gay community as well. Um, in general, kind of focusing on um, dating and relationships. Um, as I say, the entire video will be soft-spoken, and I should say also that although I don't specifically speak about sex, well, I will be very briefly, um, this uh, video isn't suitable for children, so um, not that I go into too much depth anyway, but just, just to be safe. Um, I... I'm going to be rambling about that and also just to kind of give you a little bit of an update. I am also um, in the process of um, setting up um, a, a sort of schedule so that I can try and keep myself on track. I've been quite bad, as you've probably seen recently, with um, getting my videos recorded and stuff. And I said in my last video that I was going to film it directly after, which I did. But unfortunately, um, I wasn't happy with the video and um, I don't intend to release the video unless I'm 100% happy with it. So, um, this is actually my second attempt filming this video because I filmed it earlier today in daylight with the hope of releasing it tonight and I just couldn't, the, the sun kept on beaming in and it was just, it was too much. So. Um, you'll also notice just down here that I've got a new, um, I've basically invested in a little arm for my microphone because I got tired of holding it, um, or putting it onto a, a, a table. Um, and it's with the intention of, um, when I've launched my Patreon at the start of November, I'm going to be doing, um, some patron exclusive live streams to start with. Um, and then I'll do um, some live streams for um, the rest of my subscribers later in the year. I just thought it'd be quite a good way of um, thanking those who are willing to support me so early on. Um, so that's my plan. Um, I'm really looking forward to that. It'll be quite good. I, As I've said before, I took part in Tingly Voices birthday live stream a couple of months ago, and that was really, really good fun. Um, so yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, so, before I get started, just another sort of caveat is that obviously what I'm saying is um, about, you know, gay dating and gay relationships, etc. is from my own experience. It might not necessarily apply to um, other countries. It's just purely my experience in Scotland and um, people may disagree with me on certain things, but this is just my interpretation. So don't take what I say is gospel. The reason why I wanted to cover these topics is because I had spoken to a couple of friends before and it was quite interesting to see that actually there's not a huge amount of understanding as to the various hurdles that gay men have to um, kind of get over in order to have um, a relationship with someone or to date someone. Um, and I say gay men specifically because that's obviously the, you know, that's the one area where I've got um, uh, experiencing, like well, obviously all my relationships have been um, with men so I can't really speak to any other areas of the LGBTQ plus community. Um, but anyway, so what we'll do is I'll break it down into, first of all, the sort of hurdles that we have to kind of overcome. But then secondly, speak about um, some of the implications of that. And then secondly, I'm going to also cover the... Um, a little bit about the world of grinder, which is very interesting. 
Um, so yeah, starting with relationships. Um, so speaking theoretically, um, I'm in a bar and I'm stood at the bar and I see a guy who I find attractive. The first barrier, no matter whether you're in a, a gay bar or a regular bar, um, and I use a regular, not in a condescending way, but just a non-gay bar. Um, the first hurdle for that is to know whether that person is gay or bisexual. And that isn't always as easy as it seems. There was one occasion in particular um, where I was in a gay bar and so I assumed the person was gay, but actually he was straight. Um, and so my friend got the attention, my female friend got the attention and I didn't, and I was not pleased. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, so that's the first hurdle is actually discovering whether or not the person is gay or bisexual. The second hurdle is one where any sexual orientation has, and that, that is, is that person also attracted to me? Um, so everyone knows what that feels like, you know, trying to work out whether that person is kind of reciprocating the interest and whatnot. But the third hurdle is something that you probably, well, many people may discover, but most people won't probably discover um, on the first meet. And that is when, whether that other guy and you match up sexually. And what I mean by that is in gay relationships, generally speaking, the each partner will take a specific role in sex. And those roles are top, versatile, and bottom. And you've also kind of got, it's a bit of a spectrum, so you've got verse top and verse bottom sort of in between as well. Um, and the politest way to explain it is basically a top is a guy whose preference is to give in sex and a bottom is somebody whose preference is to receive in sex and somebody who's versatile um they generally don't mind whichever so this is less so of a problem for guys who are versatile because they can kind of you know um go either way however there are situations where you can meet people um, and that attraction can be reciprocated, but then you don't match up sexually because either you're both tops or you're both bottoms. Um, now for some people, it isn't a massive deal and for others it is, and it purely depends on, I suppose, the importance of sex in the relationship um i know this is the, one of the reasons why i bring this up is because the gay community generally has a reputation for being more promiscuous than um other communities um and i think part of the th the, the problem with having, or the problem that kind of people don't understand is that there is that third hurdle when you are entering into a relationship. So you could be someone who is a top, finds the other person very attractive, and they find you attractive, but they are also a top. And the same with being a bottom. And so you're then in a situation where you're kind of asking yourself, do I continue this 
or do I um, call it off because it's actually going to cause more problems than what it's worth? Um, and this is where within the gay community, there's quite a few open relationships. Um, and open relationships come in so many different forms. They, um, first of all, only tend to succeed when there's a huge amount of trust and communication. But also when there's sort of set boundaries. And it's not always because, you know, an open relationship isn't always because of that issue of whether there's two tops or two bottoms. Sometimes it's just other things, you know, other interests sexually. Um, however, it is a reason as to why in the gay community there tends to be more open relationships because um, gay men tend to want to experiment more and um, if they are not getting that aspect then naturally they will want to explore with other people and so almost like opening your relationship is quite it's a, it's a compromise to overcome that third hurdle so it could be right okay well I, I have a really strong bond with this person I could fall in love with them but I don't have um we don't always have that sexual element for example so that is what I'm going to call the third hurdle <laughs> there's so many more and I'm, I'm really I'm really simplifying this um to be honest but I feel like it gives a generally quite a good insight into what it's like um within the gay community. Um, so that's, that's sort of, you know, the first step um, or the first couple of steps for dating someone, um, a fellow gay man. Um, and gay relationships are quite interesting because like I said, there's quite a few that I, I know quite a few people who have open relationships um, and it works really well for them because they are based on honest communication, um, set boundaries um, and kind of trusting your partner enough knowing not to go out with those boundaries. And I think when you look at sort of a traditional um, sort of household, um, mum, dad, daughter, son, etc. Um, that sort of thing is so taboo that a suggestion that you could, the mother or the father could go away and do what they wanted within reason um, is very, very taboo. Um, and I think it's because generally the gay community is a, I keep on saying generally, I'm trying to, I'm trying to not to sound like I'm, you know, um, slandering any communities here um, um, a bit more open-minded because they've had to be we've had to overcome that third hurdle of oh gosh like um, you know we don't actually this is, isn't going to work sexually um, so that's quite interesting I think anyway um, and it's funny because the reason one of the big reasons why I wanted to, to make this video as well was because I've had friends who very hesitantly sort of asked, so how does it sort of work? Um, and I suppose that leads me sort of back nicely to how it actually does work in terms of how you know. And essentially, it is just a preference. Um, some people have specific reasons why they like it a certain way. Um, why they prefer to be top or bottom, other people are versatile, um, and it is just kind of based on what turns you on, basically. Um, so, that's that. Now moving on to the world of, um, I'll just say gay dating apps, and one of the most well-known is Grindr. 
Now, I had quite a rude introduction to Grinder, to be honest with you. Um, I was in a long-term relationship um, up until 2018, and it was an amicable bre- uh, it was an amicable breakup, um, and it was it was quite a change because before we broke up um there was no such thing as grinder you know um or sorry um when we were together or before we were together there was no such thing as grinder we literally met um in a casino um so there was no such thing as grinder anyway i digress so to then come out of a long term relationship to then be exposed to this very um very interesting world (laughs) um was quite a shock to the system and my thing with grinder is you have the ability to be very very specific in what you're looking for and it's great in this in terms of you know you kind of overcome that third hurdle that i was speaking about very quickly because you can tell generally when people if i say generally one more time honestly um, how many times did I say in this video? <laughs> Prize for the winner. Um, what other word can I use? So, um, it's it's possible to look for very specific things, and everybody knows. Um, they will put up what they want, um, what they're looking for, um, and you can kind of filter your grid, as it's called, um, based on what you're looking for. So whether that's just casual fun or dates or relationship or whatever. Um, but for me, my introduction to Grinder was I was very new to it, like I said, and I went onto it and I just put up some face photos and um, one of the the sort of options on the profile is to include your body type and in that I said average and this was going back a few years um, in that I said average and then I remember a couple of days in, I then get a message from a blank profile who then messages me saying, average, question mark, more like large. And I was just shocked that somebody, some random person sat in their flat um, with nothing better to do with their time would sit there and make such a harsh comment um, to, to, to try and bring someone down like that when they've kind of put themselves out there, you know, making a new profile. Obviously, they don't don't know my backstory. I've not put a massive sort of essay on it saying, you know, just out of a long-term relationship, blah, blah, blah. But it just was a bit of a shock to the system. Um, And another thing you can do in Grindr is you're able to, um, to filter based on tribes, as it's called on there. And those tribes are things like um, uh, bear, twink, otter, daddies, jock, uh, I think it's geek or nerd, um, things like that. And they're essentially categories of men that you like. Um, So for example, if you were into guys who look quite boyish, um, they would be twinks. Um, if you are into older guys, um, you would go for daddies, um, things like that. And again, that was very new to me. Um, the in the gay community, you know, you make passing comments and you say, "Oh, you know," you would joke about that sort of thing, but never actually filter based on that it was just it was bizarre 
but I suppose it kind of caters to exactly what we're saying about having those hurdles um because when you think about it the vast majority of men are straight um which means that you know a minority of men are gay and there's only a a few within that who will be attracted to you as much as they're attracted as you're attracted to them um and so that it kind of like completely reduces the number so i suppose in a way it's, it's quite helpful but um so you've got these different tribes and um it's it's quite interesting because people will be very specific on there and say this is what i want this is what i like etc um and Grindr is also quite interesting because it's based on location. So you would open up the app and then the you've got like a grid of people and their photos. And whoever's at the top of the grid is the person who's closest to you. But it can literally be, you know, you could be in a building and it could be like this, you know, it will say 20 meters away. And you're like, <laughs> oh my God. Um, so yeah, now... There is much more, much, much more I could speak about Grindr because it is quite at times a shocking place um, or a shocking app anyway. Um, but I'm going to not do that because I don't know how much of it would be YouTube appropriate. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's Grindr. That's gay, a uh, sort of very basic, very basic understanding of gay relationships. Um, and kind of a reasoning as to potentially why there tends to be more open relationships um, in, in the gay community. Um, but yeah, I think I've covered as much as I can really think of at the moment, so... I'll probably just leave the video at that for now. Um, I hope you're all well. Thank you all so much for watching. Um, I'm so happy with how how much the channel has been growing. We're now past 1,000, I think at this point, 1,600 subscribers. So that's amazing, unbelievable um, to think that that many people have clicked that button. If you haven't subscribed already and you do, you have enjoyed the video, um, I hope you found it informative and um, please do consider subscribing. It would mean a lot. And with that, I will say have a good evening and I'll see you all again very soon. Bye bye for now.